how nice to be training finally again. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. It's been um, 10 weeks, but uh, yeah, we've got some good weather and it was a good training. What did you make of the session that stood out? <laughs> what stood out? It was just, uh, I think it was just good to be back with the players and being able to kick a ball again and, and to be at High Mush as well. Your first time under, obviously Carl's been around for a long time, but with him leading a session, how did that go? Honestly, I think we could have been running laps and I think everyone would have been pretty happy. It's just, yeah, it's just good to be back at the moment. How have you gone during the break and how difficult has it been to, for you personally? Obviously, everyone's got their own story, but to, to be laid off and to not be playing this ball club. I think uh, you just got to make the best of a bad situation. So, yeah, it's just, just trying to keep busy and doing some renos around the house and um, yeah, fitting in a few runs in between. Uh, I think just just the standard stuff. I think um, across businesses everywhere, we have to go in one way, out one way, just the normal stuff with hand washing, etc. And swabs. Um, can you explain what the protocol was with that as well? Yep, went up the nose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we did it a couple of days ago, and everyone came back negative, I presume. And that's it. Just it's just ticking the box and making sure everyone's okay. How regularly is that going to have to happen? Uh, I don't actually know, but. Yeah, I, I assume before we go back into competition, we'll probably have to do it again. Sounds like hubs at this stage. Is that what all you boys are preparing to do? Um, that was the hubs were the talk a week or two ago, but I think as we see um, border restrictions change, um, and we saw this w last weekend that a crowd was allowed at the showdown. Um, and we're back training now, so hopefully by the time we get around to playing games, we'll be able to see some some of a crowd at home. Marsh, that'd be great. What would it mean to see a crowd here up here? I think going back a month, you would have said you, you're probably crazy, but um, things change very quickly, and yeah, I think it's a, a strong possibility now. Are you hoping you'll have you'll be able to avoid hubs altogether, or do you not too fast? Uh, it is what it is. I think all the players in the league have sort of said that they're committed to finishing the season, whether that's in a hub, whether that's we have to travel every couple of days. Um, I, think, I think we're all in it to just get it done. So whatever, whatever means that is, obviously being able to play at home would be an advantage, but if it means a hub, I think all the players are happy to, to travel. I think your first game could be against Brisbane away. Okay. July 19th, if not heard that. Honestly, it's probably changing hour to hour, day to day, so yeah, I'm not reading too much. Just with regards to contracts, um, I understand you, made it, you might have been presented a new version of it just before training, obviously until August 31 and perhaps leading on to the next season, so are you happy with what's transpired? Um, I think, honestly, I didn't even look at the fine print of it. It's. I think the decision is either we're going to play or we're not going to play. So if you start to look at the nitty gritty and the financials, obviously it's not great, but it's not great for anyone in the league or any of the players, any of the staff that have been laid off. So I think it was just a matter of signing. I didn't, didn't even read it. Isn't it a worry? You might have signed something that you shouldn't have signed without getting it checked properly and this could impact on the future because you're contracted for next season as well. Yeah, I understand, but Again, the, the alternative is to not play or to play and finish the season. So it's kind of a bit of an ultimatum. You either you don't play and you don't get paid or you, uh, you accept what's there and you finish the season and do the best you can with the situation. Are you paid up? Because I think you were due for a payment on the 15th of June, holiday superannuation. I think it's coming through in the next day or two. I think um, that's, that's the talk. But again, it, it'll come when it comes. We, we can't stress about that too much. But is it stressful? Like you know, from what you were getting, obviously it's going to be six months where you're going to be getting a big pay cut. From yeah, March. of course. We've, we've kind of been in the dark with uh, the situation, whether we were going to finish the season, not finish the season. It's been 10 weeks um, sitting on JobKeeper for players, not knowing whether they're going back, not knowing whether to train or, or, or what to do. Um, so I think, yeah, to be able to just come to training and um, have an outlet at this stage is, is, is good enough for myself. But um, again, I'll just talk about myself with that. Is there a sense it might be going back to the old days where players might have to think even about working part-time and playing, you know, like the old NSL? I mean, that's been talked about. I've heard a lot about it from a, a few boys now from various clubs. Um, I guess we'll talk about that question in probably a month or two with the direction of the A-League. There's a lot of things to happen between now and then. I think 
the talk at the moment is everything to do with Fox and the FFA. And I guess the whatever happens with that will determine uh, the financials surrounding the league, whether or not we have a broadcast deal that's something similar, or if it's half, or if it's nowhere near, or if it's not there at all. Maybe it, maybe it's not there at all, and we have to find an alternative. And um, the financials don't match up. That these are all things that are way above my pay grade. <laughs> it's good to reset though, because obviously this break is a major game reset, I suppose, worldwide. Not only this. Uh, is it good? Did you say? Uh, in, what, in what regard? Well, everyone's got to consider, you know, how they're spending money, and obviously a lot of people out of work. Maybe the market was not what it should have been. Yeah, you know? it's, it probably was. If you look at Europe, it was probably very inflated. If you looked at some of the transfer fees being paid, it was, and the wages were pretty extraordinary. That may die down a little bit in in the future, but. I think Australia is pretty isolated with that. We don't have the transfer fees and that sort of cash to throw about, so it's, it's probably not as much of a big deal. The flip side of it, that is that, I mean, how much could that hurt the league, though, with inflated wages still overseas compared to the league to the A-League? I mean, how damaging might that be, though? Well, I think, it, I think a lot of players uh, worldwide are going to be in the same boat. I think there will be a lot of free agents coming up where they may have the opportunity to leave their current club, but they're going to be in the same boat as a lot of other players. Where, where do I go? Who's going to pay me? And is there going to be a better deal elsewhere? And that answer might be no. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. So just to clarify, I'm from Dallas, because you, you guys have you signed on until the end of August with um, amended contracts. Yes. Also for next year as well, or would that, are you waiting on, on whatever happens with broadcasters? Until yeah, I think at the, at the moment our contracts stand as normal for next year, but... Um, that could that could be a, that could be a change across the league depending on what happens in the future. Obviously, if if the broadcast rights go from 57 million to a lot smaller amount and the the wage bill is still the same, but the the numbers don't add up. So yeah, and you yeah, you see the house of cards fall down like that.